What's up everybody, King of Home here coming at you with your daily crypto update. Today we're going to be talking about Casper yet again and the main point of the day is how soon are smart contracts? Smart contracts are probably the thing that I am most excited about with Casper, the thing I think that'll really set it apart from a lot of these other proof of work coins. So, uh, I, and I also think it's probably going to be one of the things that affects the price the most in Casper if it has a successful launch. So with all of that being said, how far away are we from smart contracts? Well, we're going to talk about that today. In fact, uh, a little earlier, I think it was yesterday, actually, Casper's team, um, you know, the developers decided to have a developer chat or developer talk and they do these developer talks publicly you can listen in on the discord ask questions if you can follow along with what they're saying so they did one of these a couple days ago about smart contracts right now it's about an hour and 50 minutes long super long so i listened to most of it so you don't have to uh, and uh, let me tell you, first of all, this is a very, very technical video. So you probably don't want to watch it too much if, unless you're really into the technicals of crypto. Um, and there, there's some talking points that I'm just going to highlight the, the main thing. They really do talk a lot, very, very in depth, way more in depth than I'm going to get into with this video. So we will get into that. I also, I'm going to shortly talk about my KS 5M miner, it is up and running. This is my NetSonic miners, my KS3M and my KS5M. I got a couple more of these in the pipeline, so we'll talk more about that in later on in the video. But first of all, let's go ahead and talk about this developer chat from the Caspa crew. So the main talking points that I want, that I really got from it, in the beginning of this developer talk, they were talking about the Rusty side of things. So Rusty is um, the what they're moving over from, from some of the old way of Caspa to the new way of Caspa. And really what they talked about with this, uh, they talked about kind of how how Rusty's going, and then they got into talking about Casplex, right? So you guys are, are a little more interested in Casplex. That's a little more recent and something that you understand a little bit more. Uh, Casplex and KRC20. And what they basically said about that, Caspa, these guys that run Caspa, they don't, they're not responsible for Casplex or KRC20 tokens. Um, they're really just giving some tips to the guys that went ahead and launched this. And the main takeaway from that beginning part of that video was two things. Number one, uh, well, this is the, the part that I thought was most exciting. And, and I forgot to mention this in my last video, but they talked about the fact that one of the things that Casplex and the KRC20 token launch revealed, even though it was sort of a botched launch, was that wallets were not giving good transaction fees, good transaction fee recommendations. So what this basically means is you have other blockchains like Ethereum, um, and with those blockchains, I remember when you had a very popular DAP launch on Ethereum or a very popular smart contract launch on Ethereum, the network, would it would cost upwards of 50 to 100 times or more uh, of a fee to use Ethereum at all, right? And this is in the beginning of the smart contract days. And they sort of clean that up. Obviously, Ethereum is not perfect. If we have a very busy day, the transaction fees always go up because there's so many people using Ethereum. But what they've done differently from now compared to like four or five, six years ago is the wallets have been optimized to make sure that the fees don't go up 100x very, very quickly, right? They're, the wallets are a little smarter in giving you a good recommendation for a fee so that your transaction will get passed in a reasonable amount of time without upping it way too much. And what Casp Casplex and KRC20 did was they realized that too many wallets were just uh, not giving you good fees. They were giving you 100 times, 10 times the fees, and people were clicking the buttons and uh, making Caspa very, very expensive. So that's a, uh, a a positive that came out of the big Casplex failure um, is that they're going to be fixing these wallets. The other thing that they talked about with Casplex and KRC20 is that they... The essentially, they're teaching them to how to do it right, right? That's the simple. That's a nice way, a simple way of putting it. They're they're telling them get it right next time. Don't rush things. Don't botch the launch again. And essentially, what that means for KRC twenty is you can follow Castbox and the KRC twenty team to see exact dates. But I don't think they posted an exact date, and I don't think they're going to post an exact date. The, it's going to be done when it's done. Um, so the time frame is mid August, I think. But if it takes longer than that, shorter than that, or exactly that amount, uh, what 
what these guys said, the CASPA team said to the, K- to the KRC20 team is make sure that you just optimize it, get it done right so that it works, right? It doesn't matter if you're first out of the gate, if it, you launch a broken product, that's really going to set you behind. So they're really trying to push for that. The CASPA team is going to have to push them for that. So that was the beginning of the video. And then the meat and potatoes of the video, like the next hour and a half worth of, of, of video here was talking about smart contracts on CASPA. So it gets really complicated and technical. The short little technical side of it was they were talking about there's a couple different types of smart contracts. There's EVM smart contracts. The E stands for Ethereum. This is where a lot of other coins are based on EVM. You have like Base, Arbitrum, etc. cetera. Um, and then you have just other virtual machine, machine contracts that are not based on Ethereum. And then you have what they were talking about for the majority of the video. You have Cairo, which is another language that's used to write smart contracts. One of the coins that uses Cairo right now is StarkNet. And essentially, I think what the Casper team is trying to do is they're trying to figure out what they want to do with smart contracts. And what one of these guys said, one of the main Casper guys said was um, smart contracts, they are not top priority, right? They're number, they're like number three plus priority. They have other things to get through first, but they do want to start talking. I mean, you got to start start the conversations early to figure out what you, what you want to do later. And this is basically what this video is, guys. This is the early, 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 early stages of smart contracts. And what I basically can gather from the entire video, if I wanted to sum it all up in one point, is smart contracts are nowhere near ready for Casper, right? It's a long way out. Basically, what, you, what you're watching here is them discussing, you know, how are we going to do this, right? Um, that's what I got from the video. So they were talking to this guy who was over, who, who is on the StarkNet team and what they're doing with Cairo. And what a lot of the Casper people were saying was, you know, how does this work? Is, is it worth it for us to go with this Cairo method? Because that I think that's what Casper's trying to figure out. Do they want to do zero knowledge proof EVM, uh, zero knowledge proofs uh, for their smart contracts? Do they want to do EVM smart contracts, Cairo smart contracts? And whatever they figure out, I'm sure it'll be great but they need to figure out what they want to use. They were talking about things like security, that matters, um, how to migrate people over from other smart contracts to use it, whether or not Uniswap can, and other dApps can be built on these um, smart contracts they're using. So again, they're in the basic, basic beginning stages of, of figuring out smart contracts. So that's my answer with that. If you're waiting, oh man, I can't wait for smart contracts to launch next month or next year. Honestly, I think it's a year plus out for smart contracts. So we have a long way to wait before we see anything. Unless we see some massive major update with these guys in like a couple months. I'll give you guys an update on that. So that is the gist of that long way out. Like I said, that's, that's one of the things I'm most excited about and, and, and for the price of Casper. So if you're if you're the same like me, you're going to be holding Casper for quite a while before you see that massive rise Um due to smart contracts if, if that happens. So that is the summary of the video right there. You guys can watch the 51 hour, 50 minute summary of it, or you can use um, Gemini to summarize it. Gemini doesn't really do a great job of summarizing super long videos like that, but you can ask it. And let's go ahead and move on to my final point before we tap off this video, which is my miners. First of all, how is mining going? Let's go ahead and go take a look at the miner profitability right now. Uh, KS, obviously, Casper's been at the top for about a year now for mining. And uh, we're looking at about 5.3 month ROI for these Bitmain Casper KS5 Pros. And we can kind of scroll down here and see the KS5 M's. I'm not sure if the KS5 M's are actually on here. Yeah, here it is. KS5 M's, number three. Um, we're looking at an ROI at 5.5 months, $42 a day. Pretty nice stuff right there. So like I said, my miners are running with NetSonic. NetSonic does this thing where they do curtailment, which means that if it gets too hot, then you're legally legally required by the state to turn off your miners, these mining farms, for a certain amount of time. So that's why you're seeing this dip in hash rate right here. But overall, working pretty nicely with these two miners added together, the KS3M and the KS5M running together. I have other ones, but we're just going to talk about NetSonic right now. Uh, it's making approximately 350 CASPA per day or $58 a day, which uh, covers electrical costs in about maybe a weekish time. 
and then a little less than a week actually. Well, no, about a week. And then after that, for the next three weeks, you're getting profits, at least hopefully from, uh, from, from running this miner. And again, we can also take a look at the hash rate. It's going up, 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 up. We are at, let's reload this, make sure it's accurate. Um, I think it was at 376 before. Oh yeah, right now it's at 393 pay to hash, rising uh, quite significantly, 403 according to cast at FYI. So as we see that number rise, I think that number is going to continue to rise because these, these, these miners are getting pushed out to people more and more as the days go on. And the final point I'll say with miners is this, I have three more miners in the works coming out. I'm really just trying to make sure that my whole mining setup doesn't become obsolete. Uh, if you have old, old, old miners, you're going to have to either get rid of them, sell them, or turn them off because they make so much less and the electricity is not worth it. So you have to sort of, you have to keep up in the mining game with, with the latest and greatest ASIC miners and figure out how you're going to do that if you want to continue to mine, which is kind of what I'm doing. I'm not really going to give you guys strategies on mining right now. It's it, That's a whole nother video, but uh, I have two more KS5Ms with Ice River that are going to be up and running in the next couple days. And then I have a KS5 or a KS... KS Three pro, what is, what is this thing called? A KS, um, where's my my? It's the, it's the one at the top. KS five pro plus, um, also coming soon here too. All right, guys, that is everything for today. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about Caspa's future. Are you excited about smart contracts the most, like me? Are you excited about this stuff, like the ten blocks per second and the block dag that's coming soon? That's the two things that they said they were gonna work on before smart contracts. Or are you excited about other coins in general? I'm looking at some other coins too. And, you know, I'm doing my research, but they haven't really tickled my fancy to, to, to dive deep into them right here. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're not a Patreon member, consider becoming a Patreon member. Just encourage me to make more of these videos. Peace out.